Madam Speaker, first of all, I want to thank all the members on the Small Business Committee for the work and support of the bills before us. The legislation we're considering is, once again, a product of our committee's bipartisanship and shows that we're committed to our nation's entrepreneurs. The seven bills, uh, the seven bipartisan bills we're considering will promote economic growth on our main streets in numerous ways. The first two reaffirm our commitment to being good stewards of taxpayers' dollars and the importance of holding pandemic fraudsters accountable for their crimes. The second pair of bills under consideration will help small firms attract and retain qualified employees by boosting apprenticeships and career and technical education programs. And finally, we will consider three bills to improve the federal procurement process and promote opportunities for small businesses to secure contracts from the federal government. The first bill under consideration today is H.R. 7352, the PPP and Bank Fraud Enforcement Harmonization Act of 2022, introduced by myself and our ranking member, Mr. Luke Meyer of Missouri. H.R. 7352 sets the statute of limitations for all cases of PPP fraud at 10 years, consistent with the statute of limitations for bank fraud. Under current law, bank-originated PPP fraud is being pro prosecuted as bank fraud, which has a 10-year statute of limitations. At the same time, PPP loans originated by non-bank lenders, including fintech companies, are often prosecuted as wire fraud, which carries a five-year statute of limitations. To address this difference, this bill extends the time for prosecutors to bring charges to 10 years for all cases of PPP fraud, regardless of whether the lender was a bank or fintech company. SBA Office of Inspector General identified over 70,000 PPP loans totaling over $4.6 billion in potentially fraudulent PPP loans, many of which originated with fintechs. According to researchers at the University of Texas at Austin, fintech companies handle 75% of PPP loans connected to fraud by the DOJ, despite originating only 15% of the loans overall. As of March 10, the DOJ's efforts have resulted in criminal charges against over 1,000 defendants with alleged losses exceeding $1.1 billion and over 240 civil investigations into more than 1,800 individuals and entities for alleged misconduct in connection with pandemic relief bans, loans totaling more than $6 billion dollars. Given the extent of, pot of potential fraud, especially among the subset of PPP loans originated by non-bank lenders, we must ensure prosecutors have enough time to fully investigate and bring fraud charges. As of now, the statute of limitations for non-bank PPP loans secured in April 2020 will expire in 2025 in most cases, less than three years away. And that is not enough time given the complexity of these fraud schemes. As the chair of the Small Business Committee, I take my role over the SBA and its program very seriously. This is, that is why I sponsored this bill to give the DOJ, FBI, and state and local law enforcement the resources and time they need to bring these bad actors to justice. I thank the ranking member, Mr. Luke Meyer, for joining me in, lead, in leading this effort, and to the members of the Small Business Committee for their support. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I reserve the balance of my time. 